Hi there. Uh, these are the uh, Unity shaders that I recreated in Blender. Um, they're very simple. You have two different types, the standard metallic and the standard specular. And then within those, you also have varying different types for transparency. So first of all, we'll start with the metallic. All right, so the difference basically between the metallic and the specular is that metallic basically is always going to be a little bit reflective and the specular you can cancel out the, ref the reflectivity completely. Alright, so you have your albedo which is the diffuse texture. It's very simple. Uh, the albedo also feeds into the metallic color so you can for example have like I don't know, it's like, well it's, this doesn't look very much like gold but I mean you can try and get it. Anyways, you can make it like a completely red metal if you want to like a that that to me kind of looks like a very sort of car paint but yeah you can kind of do that um, and then the other thing too is you have your smoothness which is pretty much the roughness it's basically just how sharp or how soft your reflections are and they can go from very 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 sharp to really not that sharp at all but there still is some amount of reflectivity going on here just have to yeah so there's just it's just going to be more and more spread out normal is pretty self-explanatory it's just where you plug in your normal map and the occlusion is pretty simple it's basically just you plug in your ambient occlusion and it's going to affect both the reflect reflectivity and the albedo. So if it's a darker area, it's going to be le less reflective and also a bit more shaded. Uh, yeah, so emissive is the last one. And basically I leave it at black because it's also, it's using the color as the, the alpha as well. So for example, if I just, if I just increase the alpha, uh, the color there you can see it just becomes completely uh, emissive you can also increase the emissive strength by like a lot and you know you can have like different colors for emissive the only real difference I guess between that and the standard specular is like I said the specular you can basically change the specular color the albedo or the diffuse separately and come up with your it, it gives you kind of more control I guess and then basically the smoothness is the exact same it's either gonna be really smooth or really rough and those are the two major differences between the standard specular and the standard metallic I do prefer the metallic though but it's entirely up to you they're both perfectly good at what they do so we have the transparency so we have three different, or well, I guess four different versions. The top one is opaque, so no transparency at all. Then we have cutout, which is basically just, so yeah, you have where the cutoff is, and then you have the alpha. So the alpha will cut off at that point. A uh, better way to illustrate this is if I just take the noise texture I created and plug that into the alpha. You'll see it'll cut off at certain points, and then you can also change the cutoff and sort of yeah do that by default the alpha is set to one obviously and you can use the alpha in an image texture to define that uh, obviously <laughs> all right so then the unity standard um, fade is very similar to the cutoff in the sense that the alpha will oh yeah something I should say about both of these is that the way the alpha works is it's cutting out the entire material. So when you set this to zero, it becomes completely invisible, except still casts a shadow for some reason. And yeah, and you can use the noise texture to, to sort of vary that. This last one is a little bit different than the other two in the sense that it only cuts out the albedo or the diffuse and it leaves the reflections. So you can have kind of like, a, I mean, you can have like, you can do windows and that kind of thing. Uh, the only thing is that there's no refraction, partly because refraction takes a lot in Blender, and I don't actually think that there's a refraction texture in Unity. I'm not really sure. 
Well, I guess I'll show you what what this actually can look like. All right, so here we have a treasure chest I created. Um, it's not very high poly, but it, I mean it's it does its job within Unity. And I'm gonna use this standard. And let's also bring in. Is this one still? Yeah, it is. Let's also bring in all the image textures. First, we need our diffuse. There's that. Plug that in. And then next, we need our metal rough. So in, in Unity, um, what you normally do is you create a metal rough material. And basically, what it is is it's a metallic map in the color and a roughness map in the alpha. So you can just plug those in there have a look and now it's starting to come along as you can see the roughness is doing its thing next you have let's see I guess the normal the normal map and like I said that works the same way so you need to make sure that you're turning this to non-color data and bringing in a vectored normal map in order to view it properly. So there's that. And then the last one is the occlusion map. So you just plug into there and as you can see it just darkens things in the corners ever so slightly, reduces the, the reflectivity in those areas. And if we just kind of take a look in Unity and compare, and there it is. I mean, it looks pretty much the same. I would say that the um, the reflectivity in this in Unity is a little bit more intense, but for the most part, yeah, you can get a lot of really cool stuff done. And the benefit of this is that if you want to create procedural textures within Blender, which is something that's really, really easy to do within Unity or within uh, Cycles, uh, that's something that you can do. So you can create your procedural textures, plug them into uh, everything you need them to, and then all you have to do is, let's say, bake them and export them as textures. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, and I hope you enjoy and put these to good use.